Here we stand overlooking the Circus Maximus, and we span over to the Chalian Hill, where we head to today's Roman Station Church, Santi Giovanni e Paolo al Celio, or in English, Saints John and Paul on the Chalian Hill. Thanks for joining us today at Crux Stationalis, the Roman Station Church Network. Walking up from the Forum at the Palatine Hill, we pass through these flying buttresses which support the side of the Basilica. Among these buttresses we find the entrance to the old Roman houses which lie underneath the Basilica, found in the year 1887 by the rector of the Basilica, as he was searching for the tombs of the martyrs Saints John and Paul. The same John and Paul of whom we hear in the Roman canon in the Holy Mass. As I've said before, the Roman Station Church pilgrim itinerary is primarily a journey from the tomb of a martyr or martyrs to another tomb of a martyr. The martyrs whom we invoke in the Litany of the Saints on different days throughout the liturgical year for priestly ordinations, for processions, we, the local church of the Diocese of Rome, visit their tombs during these days of Lent. These very visits, these processions, or our statio, from one church to the next, are the very origin of the Litany of the Saints. With the Pope, the clergy and religious of Rome, the faithful would have gathered behind a crux stationalis, or station cross, and processed to a tomb of a martyr. Expressing by song, prayer, and deed the interior journey of Lent, a greater conformity to Christ, uniting to his passion, as the martyrs themselves did, for greater love no man hath than to lay down his life for his friends. We enter these Lenten days taking up the words of St. Paul to the Colossians, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the Church. How beautiful is this opportunity during Lent to unite our sufferings to Christ in the memory of his passion, that our sufferings, voluntary and involuntary, become redemptive. On this Friday after Ash Wednesday, we go to a church under the care of the Congregation of the Passionist Fathers. In conjunction with the charism of the Passionist, to keep the memory of the Passion of Christ alive in their heart and to spread that devotion, we have the reminder of two Roman soldier martyrs, Saints John and Paul, who gave their life in fidelity to Christ. That is the example we have to follow during these days of Lent, a meditation and examine in and of itself. The Basilica of Saints John and Paul on the Chalian Hill was built in the year 398 by Byzantius, the Roman senator, and Saint Pamacius, his son, a pious friend of Saint Jerome. They fashioned their house on the Chalian Hill into a Christian basilica building also over the home of two Roman soldiers martyred under the Emperor Julian in the year 362. Saints John and Paul declined to return to military service under Julian the Apostate, the nephew of Constantine, whereupon the Emperor gave them ten days to reconsider. They spent the ten days dispersing their wealth, distributing alms day and night. Emperor Julian had them beheaded secretly by Terancianus in their house on the Chalian Hill. Terancianus had them buried where they died and spread the rumor that they had gone into exile. Three Christians who were ministering to them were also executed and buried nearby, Saints Crispus, Crispinianus, and Benedicta. In the sanctuary we find a series of three frescoes, the martyrdom of St. John, the martyrdom of St. Paul, and the conversion of Terancianus. And here lie the remains of Saints John and Paul underneath the high altar. The sanctuary is crowned with this fresco in the apse of Christ in glory completed in the year 1588 by Cristoforo Roncalli. And here is the place of martyrdom of Saints John and Paul among the Roman complex of houses which lies below the basilica. Another John and Paul come to mind here in the basilica. 
St. Paul of the Cross and his brother John Baptist. Pope Clement XIV granted the complex of the monastery and the basilica to the Passionist Fathers in the year 1773. It was thus established as a retreat, as termed by St. Paul of the Cross in his rule. The rule was written in 1720. These two brothers, while still young, embraced the life of the Passion of Jesus, keeping the memory of the Passion alive in their hearts. This devotion spread across the Italian peninsula and beyond, inspiring young saints like St. Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows and St. Gemma Galgani, a perennial model, but also especially a model for our modern times. St. Gemma's love for Jesus in his Passion and her love for Jesus in the Eucharist were said to be one and the same. Jesus in the Eucharist and Jesus on the cross would be throughout Gemma's life the inseparable objects of her love. And here we find ourselves at the altar of Our Lady, where the Blessed Sacrament is reposed. Behind this image of Our Lady, we find a Eucharistic throne. The image slides into the wall to the left and allows for the ability to expose the Blessed Sacrament upon a throne. It is written in the Annals of History of the Passionists that the faithful would gather on Sunday evenings here, especially for Eucharistic adoration and benediction. The throne that is found behind this image of Our Lady is not unlike this one at Santissima Trinità dei Pellegrini, being used here for the 40 hours devotion which precedes Lent each year. Also found behind this altar of Our Lady is a 13th century fresco which lies on an older wall of the basilica. I never cease to be amazed when I step into this basilica of Saints John and Paul, and I realize the span of time which is expressed by the martyrdom of these Roman soldier saints, John and Paul, and then lived throughout the centuries and recalled wherever the Roman canon is prayed, and given a modern example in the lives of St. Paul of the Cross and his fellow Passionists. And so we take up the maxim of St. Paul of the Cross, a teaching central to his life where he says, when you are alone in your room, take your crucifix, kiss its five wounds reverently, tell it to preach to you a little sermon, and then listen to the words of eternal life that it speaks to your heart. Listen to the pleading of the thorns, the nails, the precious blood. Oh, what an eloquent sermon. Thank you for joining us today at Crux Tationalis at the Roman Station Church for the Friday after Ash Wednesday. Please like this video, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Do the channel a favor and share it with your family and friends. For those who can't pilgrimage to Rome, I hope these videos bring a little bit of Rome into your household and your Lenten journey. We will see you tomorrow at our next Roman Station Church, Sant'Agostino.